It's the 89th episode of the Elite Cosplay Podcast. I'm Holly. And I'm Kevin. Yay. Hello again. Hello. This is our first Patreon patrons, pa- po- po- uh, bur- bur- uh, uh, special oh. episode release of the podcast. So if you're <laughs> listening to this, it's because of our sponsors on Patreon. Yes, they, okay, so for those of you who don't know or didn't see our videos or anything, um, we started a Patreon just a couple days ago. Yes. Uh, it was very scary for me. I don't know. Why Kevin, is it scary? I don't know. It's intimidating. Um, and uh, we're really, it's scary but exciting at the same time. It's kind of bringing a new, I feel like it's bringing a new era for us and it's pushing me a little more personally. Um, we like talked about this for like months, basically mm-hmm. planning this. Uh, we wanted to wait until after Anime Expo for sure because it was too much. Uh, and we have we we I really you know Kevin and I really wanted the reward tiers to be good, logical, yeah, logical and just like good like stuff that people want I think or mm. want to learn and you know, or receive. Um, But I really want to give back, you know, because people are helping us out. I want to give, you know. Um, So if you haven't checked it out, you can go on to patreon.com slash elite cosplay and you can just look at it there. We'll have public posts there, too, uh, because Patreon recently, I think, started opening that up to have public posts for everybody. Um, And I like the way the reach is because Facebook reach is so bad. But yes, um, for the podcast uh, and YouTube videos, um, the podcast will be released to Patreons uh, a couple days earlier than everybody else. So the podcast will be released on Friday afternoons for Patreons oh, wow. and Monday mornings for uh, non-Patreons, basically, on our YouTube and on iTunes. Um, so just so you're aware of that, that's happening. Um, also, for YouTube videos, they're just going to be a week later for everybody else so as soon as we make the video they'll be released for patrons and then a week later uh on our youtube um we originally had uh, i think in our video we stated that um our podcast was going to be released a week later for non patrons uh but nick's actually gave us some feedback on that video that we made a couple days ago um and was like i think the podcast is more of a current event kind of thing and i totally agree and she was like maybe not have it a week because then it'll kind of be out out of, I don't want to say out of style, out of people's out minds, of I guess, out of context, yeah. Then, so that's why we decided just to, just for the podcast to be just a couple of days later instead of a full week, like videos. So, just so you know. Anyways, that was our exciting personal news for the week. Right. Yes. And that's th- Holly's th- <laughs> exciting news update the, of the week. And for actually, for those who have already supported us, uh, we appreciate you very much. Seriously, you guys are awesome. Um, it's really nice to feel supported sure uh we also our first goal is super cool our first goal is um if we reach it we're at five percent right now so we're getting there five percent that's <laughs> but, like one <laughs> twentieth. our first goal is uh to lower once we reach it we'll lower our photo shoot costs um which is something you know i've been on edge about this past year because we had to raise our prices to be able to travel enough um to get to people uh and Mm -hmm. if we reach Mm -hmm. that goal it's a monthly goal you know um we can lower them so that's really awesome and i think it'll open us up to more people exactly exactly so yeah anyways enough about that oh (laughs) Oh, all right i mean i'm gonna talk about the other goals that are on there our next goal is the behind the scenes stuff is that what you were talking about yes okay and anyway yeah so a big part of what we want to do and what we want to push is showing what we do being a little more transparent about what we do one of the tiers of the patreon subscriptions does give you access to our behind the scenes stuff right yeah so we want to make more behind the scenes video and break it down i think is is that what you're trying to say yeah 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 (laughs) sorry i was confused about what direction sorry that's the next goal after the the lowering the cost one the next goal is a more lofty goal and it would just be because Kevin and I both have our hands full, obviously, if you've worked with us before uh, in photo shoots, so we can't um, record things. Right. Like, our we- videos used to be of us tying a 
uh, a camera to a tree or something. Yeah, so it's but it always doesn't, like it a doesn't weird pick low the angle. best shot. Yeah, and it's really boring. So uh, the next goal would be to have have a person help us out and hold the camera for us, basically, and get better shots and shots of me. You know, every once in a while, doing like actual breakdowns during a shoot. So sure. like slowing down the shoot. And what's the process here? What am I thinking? Why are we lighting it this way? Yeah, yeah. Why are we having the person face? You know, whatever. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so. Let's move on from Patreon. I All think. right. Yes. <laughs> but that's what's happening. If anyone's curious, elitecosplay.com slash Patreon. No, I don't know no, if that exists. No, Patreon.com slash Elite Cosplay. Oh. Just flip it the other way. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, last podcast, um, I did talk about charms and at Anime Expo oh, and yeah, how we right. were seeing that everywhere. Yes. Uh, Nick said charms are definitely increasingly very popular. I knew it. I know they've always existed, but I, mean, I felt like it was just overload this time. I got annoyed because they were so cute, but I had nothing to do with them, so I decided to make my own Ida bag of just Artist Alley stuff. See, that's exactly... That's a good idea. Because, like, yeah, there's, there's a the lot problem. of... That's the problem. Yeah. Well, there's a... Yes, that's the problem. Is There's... Even Kevin has this problem. There's a lot of stuff that we see at Artist Alley that's, like, stickers or, like, yeah, charms or any art, you know, whatever, art, obviously. And it's like, I like this a lot, but I don't, don't know. know what to do with it yep. like, <laughs> i don't know i don't have any place to put it basically yeah that's, that's, a, that's a big problem for i me. mean back in the day when flip phones had that little notch cut out for it and you could slap a yeah you could slap a little bit charm on there. dangles in there for they those make who attachments didn't know now. back in the day oh phones jesus used what to like flip up. five years ago no I, I no know. no because no, more than they five years them, ago, lady. No, they had them on other phones, too. I know. Not just high school. Not Anyways. many nowadays have it anymore. My Anyways, mom had to have I, think, I think I need to do what Nick's did and just have a... I mean, I guess I have my backpack. My backpack has things like patches and pins on it from for cosplay and cute stuff. So I guess that's my version. Um, anyways, there, <laughs> there was a Facebook post that pissed a lot of people off oh um it's from a i guess comic book company question mark uh they're called evo universe it's evo uh and they made a post and i'll just read it out loud to you it says calling all amateur cosplayers the evo universe is looking for both a male and female cosplayer to cosplay as characters from our novel from our novels at this year's 2017 new york comic-con we are looking for individuals with an energetic upbeat tone who can hand out flyers drive traffic to our booth and physically embody our characters to be selected cosplayers must create their own costumes based off a character from our novel that you can reference from the concept artwork from our website submitting either a two-minute video or a picture please note you will not be reimbursed for materials to create the costume we are also not responsible for travel and lodging fees jesus christ <laughs> candidates must be 18 years old and up to apply email submissions uh those who are selected will get one 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 full vendor four day pass sorry that was confusing to say okay uh under under the evo universe to attend nyc comic-con 2017 and a free lunch for four days with a 20 dollar limit salary is negotiable and will range from eight dollars to eleven dollars an hour for the four days and you are expected to work 9 a.m to 7 p.m uh, we will select the best candidate based on appearance and look of the costume. Your, if selected, your role will be to arrive on time and in costume looking presentable, embody the character, and drive traffic to the booth, hand out flyers, go here at the convention center, mingle with convention goers, and invite them to our booth. Based on your performance, you may be selected to attend future events on behalf of the EVO universe. Now, based on all that, people were very upset couple comments from it so you want a cosplayer to spend probably a few hundred dollars in fabric and other various materials hundreds more for hundreds more worth of labor uh, decent tailors make a minimum of twenty dollars an hour to replicate that horrendous design pay probably over a thousand for a hotel room and travel accommodations just so you can work them for ridiculous hours at slightly above minimum wage best case scenario you pay 440 dollars for a cosplayer's three thousand dollar investment this does not end up in favor for the cosplayer not one bit doesn't surprise me you've turned reviews off for this company on facebook 
Someone else said, finally, someone pointed out how fugly their designs are. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking. Okay, good. I'm glad you were going to say something. That's the biggest insult is asking someone to wear that. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> Have you seen? Have you seen their? <laughs> yes, I did. Um, you can, if, for those listening, you can check it out. It's EVO Universe. I think it's just EVOUniverse.com. Uh, I don't know about that, but I, I, if I you remember. look him up, the first result is a failed Indiegogo campaign. It is EVOUniverse.com. Yeah. Okay. A failed Indiegogo campaign. Yeah. Um, a whopping fifteen dollars out of twenty thousand dollars asked for. Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. Oh. Uh, someone else said, this is how you alienate an entire fan base. The compensation is a smack in the face for what the material for the costume alone would cost. This doesn't include time spent, travel, hotel, or any other added expenses. I feel like the reasoning you're targeting amateur cosplayers is because you know a lot of them won't argue for better compensation and logging. Lodging. <laughs> Logging, because they're they are eager for exposure and would break themselves financially to be able to get it. Shame on you. Well, the the shame part is they went to they went to Indiegogo. Sorry, I, I should correct myself and say twenty eight dollars. Uh, they went to Indiegogo with the pledge of five thousand dollars. Oh, they're going to SDCC. Never mind. They're already going. Never mind. Sorry. Uh, I, I thought it was to go to New York Comic Con, and they were just going to go anyway. So they had the money to do it. They just didn't want to pay for it. You know. Oh. Oh. This is an absolute joke and insult. The salary combined doesn't even touch how much I charge for making okay. an yes, ugly yes, outfit yes. like this. I I understand where people's <sighs> anger is coming from. I mean. The question I have a few th- issues though, not just with EVO. I mean, uh, they their designs aren't my taste, so I shouldn't say they're bad. But they, they are, have like twenty thousand followers on Facebook, I think. And how many of those are bots? I don't know. That's, That's the question. What, it was Listen. it was an interesting situation yeah. that I found myself in when no, I no, saw it, that post. So I, this is a this is an issue, right? Where uh, on the flip side. Um, Dream Daddy, a game that has also recently launched, had hundreds of people, well, not hundreds, it was several dozen people at Anime Expo. Cat, you know, their outfits are a little easier, for sure. I thought it was San Diego Comic Con. Uh, I thought it was Anime Expo. I'm pretty sure it was Anime Expo. But they had people just doing it because they cared about the game, because they wanted the design and they cared about the concept of it. So this is the thing where, like, they couldn't find somebody like if they had maybe changed the language to like um we're looking for volunteers who are who are already coming who are right. going to be cosplaying as something that we're presenting you know and we'll compensate you for the badge they they phrased it poorly in the sense that they're lo- they they were looking to hire someone to do this right um and this is how cons get away with stuff too all the time it's like we're looking for volunteers here's a bat we'll give you a badge in exchange for your time they were saying you know you make everything we're having a contest and then only the best people will get basically nothing right so yeah. They're 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 backtracking now. Are they? By the way. Oh, good. They had a bad marketing. Is what happened. They they sh- they, they worded it. Uh, they worded it like a job uh, and the, a contest where we get to pick, where in this you know pick the best. But the I I doubt they would have had any submissions or very yeah. many. Yeah, it sounds like they don't have the fan base to do so. Like like you said, people were already cosplaying as Dream Daddy because yeah. they liked the designs yeah. and they were interested in the game. So it was more like, hey, come hang out. It wasn't like a, you're going to be working for 10 hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? Slapping flyers for- <laughs> in people's hands who were just going to throw it on the ground the exactly, next Exactly, and ignore you. And it's it's crowded in there. Uh, they said... Uh, they said they've been attacked. They posted what I just read. They said, here is the post unaltered. And so I just read the whole thing, obviously. Oh, my God. They were attacked? They can't even take responsibility for, and they like... they said... This is the no this is the part we did not include the part that we planned to make a kind of surprise for the people we selected. One, we intended to take both cosplayers out as an all-expense-paid dinner in Manhattan on us. At the end of the final day, a Sunday, we had planned to present the cosplayers with an additional check on top of their salary as a surprise. 
No, I'm see, side this, eyeing you right now. Yeah, no, no. This is them <laughs> just being like, well, oh, if they would have done it the right, you Listen, know. Listen, as it keeps going, this check would cover the cost of their uh-huh. costumes uh-huh. and a percentage of their lodging uh-huh. and transportation uh-huh. fees. Information that we would get from them so should they be selected and on the day of their arrival bonus pay in cash based on the sales of the four days of the event so and all whoever took part in this would have gotten back the full reimbursement cost of the costume they created part of their transportation a free four-day pass to nyc comic-con a chance to mingle have fun get exposure if they had averaged aspirations of going pro an event to add to their portfolio on top of bonus pay and some other perks we might we would have thought of on right. top of that, see, see, they, 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 things we would have thought of. This is this is like what a child does when they when they make a mistake. I'm like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I I was gonna do it, but blah, blah, blah. no, this is this is very immature marketing team is what what this is this as is soon as i posted it the likes and interest started to come in that all changed however early this saturday morning i got barraged by messages from cosplayers many who i could tell were professional calling me and my company shameful and accusing me of exploiting people this is really long i'm not going to read it all uh everything everything that was supposed to be a surprise for the people selected is what they're mad right. about no no, no that's this not is how you they, it's not how you do a job yeah no no they, they <laughs> that's not yeah wow that's pretty bad anyways i mean it was already bad and then they just fair compensation for cosplay work that you are benefiting from shouldn't be a surprise full stop yes girl Yes. If you're, like, doing a job for somebody, you need to know, like, uh, what? Why would you, like, (laughs) it makes no sense at all. I'm, like, baffled right now. I didn't see this earlier. I just looked them up and saw this, but. (sighs) Someone said, it's interesting that this is the hill you're choosing to die on. Yeah, I know, I know. (laughs) Just own up and just say, you know. Yeah, like somebody, we, like, you know, we, made we a didn't mistake. think about that. We did, you know, you guys, yeah. yeah, like, like own up to it. Like, we made a mistake. You guys brought up a lot of things, you know, we obviously didn't think about, and we're very sorry about that. I can't believe, you know, blah blah blah, blah 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 blah. Here's the revised situation. If you're really gonna. If you really think you're going to compensate the cosplayer for the full thing, just be like, I'm so sorry we said that. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I thought I wanted it to be a surprise and that was really immature of me or, right. or irresponsible. You know, here's here's the situation. Yeah. But they're just like pretending that they... I don't know, that they were just like, oh, well, it was going to be a surprise. Yeah. No, that's no, not no, how no. you... A tip is a surprise. Yeah. A tip. Like, yeah. here's... You did great if, this if weekend. They here's already, a tip. <laughs> see, if they had already thought about that, like, just saying, oh, we were going to compensate you with a percentage of the sales. Like, if they would have just said that, then that would have been like, okay, that would have right. gotten more... Right, it's like a... It's an incentive for you to pass out more right. flyers, basically. Right, and then, then now they're... Yeah, they're just backtracking. They're yeah. just it's so trying, weird. I know. It's so weird, and... And it's a it's a really poor way of getting the community to not be with you. Yeah, I. Well, this is di- diving way into like best business practices and stuff, oh, and yeah. this is not necessarily. I mean, like people are even people that just like regular people are like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, like, you don't need to have like strong. I've, to me, you don't need to have like strong business knowledge to know that that's kind of silly. That's you Isn't though. It? See, we have we. Well, how come all these people also? No, no. Well, what I'm saying is like it comes down to like uh, I, I don't know how to better word for it, but like the morality of like the person running the post, like the morals that somebody has. Like some people um. treat, you know, this is how they want to treat their people, right? So that's not a good representation. Like we treat. I, at least I imagine that we treat our audience and people that we work with with a lot of respect and a lot of professionalism and we try I try to yeah we try <laughs> very hard to do that and these people are just like what's the most we can get away skamas out of people before they complain and this is the limit that they found sure sure and the fact that they were really like amateur cosplayers and that's fine like you know if, if you don't want like you know pro cosplayers obviously are gonna charge more for you to have them working you know for you and if you as a young company can't afford that that's fine to yeah. aim at you know someone a little newer but it's like it's basically like saying uh can you do this for me for free you'll get exposure it's very similar to that you know yeah. what i mean like oh you'll get exposure it's like uh, what i mean and and people didn't even, and and then as a as a sad add-on people didn't even like the designs 
Yeah. It's like a sad. It's really is like ooh. Yeah. I don't know. They're but not we gonna... like we like our dumpster fires and we like to gossip on this podcast. So <laughs> there's your there's your dumpster I mean, people, fire of the people, week. People were Holly, saying cut in a picture of a burning dumpster, please. <laughs> people, no, people were saying saying it, and I didn't click on. it. I was like, well, now I gotta look, and then I was like, oh, okay. Now, it, it, well, I guess. All right, I'm done talking it's about not, this. It's not very nice. I, I don't want to be yeah. mean. It's they just, worked hard on it. It's or they stole did. the artwork from somebody. No, I doubt they stole it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, um, it's allegedly. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I. No, we bring up topics. This is a topic I know. that it's it's a little. I guess it's gossipy, but it's out there and and it's uh uh. I don't know. It's it's an interesting point of view, you know, especially for people who are trying to get into the, you know, um, being a guest or being at a booth for sure. a company. Cause sure. I know we know a few people that do that. Yeah. Um, and they get they get appropriately compensated for it. So. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm gonna take a break right here. Uh, if you guys want to check our uh cool cool butt shop, you should. Cool we got butt. Some- it's summertime right now. It's more of like swamp butt right now. <laughs> Gross. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, it swamp butt <laughs> store. I promise none of the merch smells like it. But Causeway.com slash swamp butt. Um, no, it's not saying random URLs. <laughs> I have to... <laughs> You see, I have to keep track of all of these. There's like redirections <laughs> oh, for like we every. We do have random. We have a lot of, of random uh, ones that redirect. Anyways, we have some t-shirts, yo. You want a cool, be a cool, cool person in some t-shirts. They are the comfiest t-shirts this they summer. They are super soft. It's it, and after I was I was actually looking at one of them the other day. We have a shirt that says cosplay and it has a cool bunch of cute little icons that represent what cosplay is all about. And they're very fine details, like little pins and needles. And I was staring at it today because I've washed that shirt like a bajillion times and the tiniest lines are still holding up. I was really happy. I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> they did a good job. They like, are very, we did local yes. and they did a really good job with because usually, t-shirts usually everything. tiny details like that get a little crunchy uh, crunch or washed off yes. in the wash. So anyways, uh, go to leecosmetic.com slash shop. Yep. We also have um, uh, Photoshop actions on there as well. So if you want your t-shirts to last forever, pro tip. <laughs> Don't stick them in the dryer. Yeah, Line dry don't dry them and, and wash them inside out. Yes. Not just our t-shirts, any t-shirts <laughs> any, that you may any, love. Any screen printed <laughs> t-shirt. Anyways, uh, Otacon is coming up really soon. Yes, I October. Think, no. August? August. <laughs> October. Is that, wait. <laughs> What's in October? New York City Comic Con, typically. Isn't there Otacon West or whatever, Las Vegas? Oh, there's Vegas? Vegas. And that's usually in January, oh. I think. It's in the wintertime. I which need makes, a which summer is good, con yeah. that's like 400 degrees out because this whole summer has been ridiculous. Not really. For us in Seattle, everywhere else in the U.S., my whole team is whining that it's so hot. Not whining, but just yeah. commentating on the heat everywhere. That's true. But I guess. Yes. I feel that. Well, everybody else con. in the country has AC. So That's true. <laughs> and if you anyway. can't hear by this podcast, there is an we AC. We have an AC right We have in the an background. AC too. It's dude. very hot today. <laughs> yes. Um. Anyways, Otacon made an announcement recently uh, that they they will be having some security at the door. They Uh-oh. said, "We at Otacon care about the safety of our members. Therefore, at the request of the venue, we are adding a bag inspection. We apologize for the inconvenience and hope that you have a safe and enjoyable Otacon." A bag now, inspection is not that big of a deal. Um, of course, it threw people in a tizzy. <laughs> because what doesn't throw people in a tizzy? More privacy. Um, if you have your, but if you have your badge and no bag, you will be able to bypass the bag inspection line. Um, but they'll have only have two doors and... open to oh, get sure. into the con. Um, and this is also their first year they're going to be in D.C. They're normally in Baltimore, but the uh, convention center that they go through is getting remodeled for the next couple years. So they moved it to D.C. So that's also throwing people off a little bit. People are kind of annoyed by that, <laughs> I guess. Um, and a lot of people are blaming this on the Phoenix Comic Con situation. Course, of course. Well, I mean, I guess the only thing I can... <sighs> it's, happening uh, so... more and, it's happening more and more, I mean, ever since then. Anime Expo has had a... a very sloppy bag check the past couple years and this year was the first year where they were like super serious about it 
with and, metal detectors and, that know, didn't work. What this means, though, right? Is it what? means the tr the terrorists have won? Is what it means. That's right? what someone said in the comments. That, it's a common <laughs> thing. It is. It really is because you know local domestic terrorism. Sure. Which is what of, that, of what Phoenix Comic Con of what the was. Phoenix Comic Con yeah. did, yeah, yeah. and what all, you know all the other random shootings and stuff like that. Yep. I, and I think, especially since they moved to D.C., I can see that being, like... More. More. Because, uh, I mean, that's the political capital of... The U.S. I'm surprised they moved to D.C., actually. That should be the bigger piece of news, is why they moved from Baltimore to D.C. I, I like, told you why. You weren't listening, were you? I No, I had spaced out. I, <laughs> They're remodeling the Baltimore oh, Convention sorry. Center. <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> Kevin had his back turned to me when yeah. he said that. <laughs> uh, I, I would still think that they would move. What else? I mean, there's a lot of cities nearby, like Al Alexandra, know. Virginia, stuff like that. What are you going to do another? The Otakon is very large. You're going to do another one at the Gaylord that can barely fit Katsukon? No, no, no. Not the Gaylord, but I'm sure there's other convention centers. East Coast is very dense. I imagine they have a lot it's, of it's large not that, convention centers It's not centers that far nearby. for them to go from Baltimore know, to DC. I know, but I feel like DC is like expensive and bougie to some degree. <laughs> but um, it's I, the it is more, some of, people did say it wasn't uh, cost effective for them to go this year because it's in DC. Yeah, because the hotels in DC are probably a lot more than Baltimore. Oh, I'm, I'm positive of that. Uh, um, yeah, it's just it's just interesting because it's. Uh, very sudden and I'm interested to see how this will trickle down to smaller cons like Sucre Con I wouldn't say is a small con it's right. got like what like 26,000 people or something yeah. but like can you imagine trying to do security at this at the Seattle Convention Center right. it would be a freaking mess there's so many entrances from like you can walk like through the park that's in the back and get in the back way and there's like multiple side entrances and it's supposed to be a public area the but downstairs is public because they have like restaurants and stuff down there so they have to keep it open so like <laughs> i don't even know it would just it'd be a mess and i'm sure it'd be a mess in a lot of places especially especially in places where it's a little colder like katsukan can get kind of cold uh some years can you imagine like having to wait outside? To, yeah, yeah, it would be. It just, it's, it's going to be an interesting year. I think this next year with seeing how uh, certain of the smaller cons, maybe if they do it, are going to handle it. Um, I think with the big, I think I someone said that New York Comic Con kind of has already done inspections and stuff. I and like we said, like Anime Expo has done bag inspections for the past couple years right but they've been really like lax and like they leave like all the side and back entrances open and so it's not i never took it really seriously <laughs> yeah i mean yeah this is that's the that's the whole crappy part about like what the time we live in now is like one person ruins it for everybody i was gonna say that. this was like this one you know person who went a little crazy and is now now it's it's just getting worse yeah. and more rules more it rules. makes me sad it's like we can't we can't we all can't uh, go to an event and have a hobby and and enjoy it and not have to think about stuff like that yeah like uh, <laughs> it's whatever i mean i never carry that much with me when we go when we do go to cons like usually we shed our bags and right just well, go I mean, in unless so we we're do rolling around our photo equipment that's what i'm saying we, we haven't shot at a con in a while yeah. necessarily so we don't like haul our bags in but when we did and anime expo first implemented the bag sitch it was annoying like having to like plop up our yeah, our huge mega bag, bag and, and them looking at every single flash being like what's this <laughs> so yep. it's <laughs> it's you know it's uh, <laughs> yeah it's I just know. it'll be interesting and and especially since cons like i mean the phoenix one had to ban wet we prop weapons for the rest of the weekend that when that happened as we've you know talked about i can't imagine that can't be happening at cons that'd be really sad for a lot of cosplay weapons are like half of the situation yeah yeah and they look too real and people Some can't them identify do. them i don't know it's better than the california where they have to paint 50 percent of guns a different color that's why i was happy with my uh diva gun because it was all sorts of colors yeah didn't need didn't need to paint it half whatever Anyways. Anyway. That's all I got today. All right. I think I'm good, too. Whoa, whoa. So if you'd like to support us, 
go to EliteCosplay.com slash shop or Patreon.com slash EliteCosplay. And with your monthly contributions, we can get closer to our goals of lowering our photo shoot costs, doing more behind the scenes stuff. Yes. Yeah. And There's a lot going on. We got a, we got a Discord server with anime movie night that's gonna happen at the end of the month that'll be fun i don't know we got fun stuff and also probably gonna give away a t-shirt eventually so okay so i mean come on pals join us we'll see you guys next week and uh thank you for listening to the 89th episode of our podcast we love you Mm -hmm. goodbye